Thomason's one of the most talented actresses I've ever worked with, and I just believed her every second. And it, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like when the job is to have chemistry, you just find it. Can't imagine you with a knife. Can you imagine me with a gun? That's very good, Eileen. Yeah, I can see it. That was a great trick. You know, obviously the chemistry between the two of you is, is really at the heart of this movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how you went about ensuring that you had that, that spark and that connection. I mean, did you have a lot of time to work on that dynamic beforehand? We didn't have a lot of time to work on it. Like we had maybe two days of rehearsal where we sat down with mm -hmm. Will and went through the script. Um, but just like getting to getting to know each other. I mean, this is super embarrassing, but I've always been like a big fan of Annie's if, ever since I watched um, The Princess Diaries for the first time. I love like, that. Thank you. <laughs> so I think like that helped the kind of awe that Eileen felt for Rebecca because it was there already. That's very kind. And and I love hearing that, Thomas, and thank you. And um, I just. Thomason's one of the most talented actresses I've ever worked with, and I just believed her every second. And um, it, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like when the job is to have chemistry, you just find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we also did this thing, Will does this thing when he's directing that's unbelievable. I've never had anybody do it, where once he feels like you, you're really in the scene and you really have it, he'll have uh, the person who's on camera do the scene without saying the dialogue. So you think the dialogue. And wow. I actually felt like on our, our, the first day, the first thing that we shot was like, it was the scene in the bar. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like a very intense monologue from my, from my part. Mm -hmm. And um, I just found that aspect of it, just listening to each other, not having the words to lean on, but actually having to be really present and kind of drop in with each other. That did a lot for me to feel like I was connected to yeah, you. Yeah, because it's quite an intimate, vulnerable thing mm -hmm. to be like making eye contact with someone but not to be saying anything. Yeah, and then to not feel self-conscious within that eye contact. Yeah. yeah. It's like permission to stare. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, these characters have so much going on beneath the surface and I think part of the fun is like we're, we're often left to interpret what they're really thinking. Um, and I haven't read the book yet, but I'm wondering if you went to the original text and if so, did that help you at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, this is actually brings up an interesting question because someone the other day asked me whether they should read the book or watch the film first. And I think watch the film first and then read the book because then the book is like the it, BTS for experts or the mm -hmm. extra extra information, extras for people who like really enjoyed the film. I think it's really exciting when you do an adaptation and the film stand up, stands on its own mm -hmm. and the book stands on its own and mm -hmm. they each enhance the other. Mm -hmm. But I mean, thank God we had Thomas in to kind of project the interiority of Eileen mm -hmm. because the, what Otessa writes is magnificent mm -hmm. and what you did and do, I mean, it's just, I, I've seen the film three times now and hey. I just, I think your performance is so incredible and how much you communicate without saying anything. And um, so I think that they would enhance each other. But in terms of Rebecca, there's this line that I really felt kind of uh, opened her up for me and kind of made me just want to be really bold in the performance. And it's um, Eileen describing Rebecca and says something along the lines of, if she sounds over the top, it's because she was. If she sounds affected, it's because she was. And I felt like I'm like, okay, I love that. Like, how do you make someone alluring and attractive and like you want to lean in, but also maybe like they would drive you up a wall over a long period of time. So that was fun to, that was fun to create. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much and uh, congrats on the film. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a great day. Listen up. This young lady is our new prison psychologist. She may be easy on the eyes, but I assure you, she is very smart. I'm Rebecca. I know. I don't think I caught your name.
Um, so my first question for Otessa, um, can you talk about what the process was like of uh, adapting your book for, uh, for the big screen, uh, and what were some of the challenges that you faced that maybe you didn't uh, think ahead of time? Sure. I mean, I think the thrill and the challenges really overlapped in that I had written the book by myself, you know, just me alone in a room, and um, suddenly I'm having to work with these two guys, um, which ended up being a total blessing and I think just made the project um, all the more dynamic and each character more dimensional. So really we just sort of put three heads together and found a shared vision and went from there. Now, William, I know you worked closely on the screenplay. How important is that for you as a director? And, you know, is it any different in a situation like this where one of your screenwriters is actually, you know, the author of the book and the creator of the whole universe? Well, in this instance, it was perfect. I mean, it was great. Not always the case because some writers um, are very precious about their book. But Otessa had the great confidence and intelligence to know that the book exists uh, in its own right. People could go and read the book, but this was an opportunity to do something different for a different medium. And so we had a very happy collaboration all together, um, working out how to tell this story on screen. Um, I forget the second part of the question, but I mean, that's the... <laughs> um, and Otessa and Luke, I mean, you are partners in real life. How does that alter or make your dynamic as, you know, work partners different or challenging? It's kind of all mushed together at this point, work, it's all life, the same. day, night. <laughs> Um, Every day is the same Breakfast day. is yeah. dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much trust and danger at the same time. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we both we know each other well enough and trust each other enough that we can sort of float any idea knowing that it will be fostered and developed and also shoot down any idea knowing that um, feelings might get hurt but we're not going anywhere. And it's like method acting, it's like method writing. We're yeah. never breaking character, we're never not writing the script, so yeah. <laughs> um, William, can you talk a little bit about the casting process because obviously a movie like this, it's you know so important to get it just right and I feel like you did. Um, Anne and Thomason are both like just so perfectly cast in their roles, can you talk about that? Yes, I mean, I can say all I can say is that we were very lucky in that um, our first choices were um, well said yes. I mean, we wanted Thomas in for Eileen, we wanted Annie for Rebecca, and uh, they both read the script and they both reacted as we hoped they would, which was to say yes, we would like to come on board with this project. And I think that's really a testament to Tessa and Luke's work. You know, if you have a strong script, you know, with characters that actors are dying to play, you've got a, obviously a much better chance of casting them. You know, Tessa, I'm sure, you know, you had your own pictures in your head when you were writing the book. Uh, when you see the final product and, you know, you're seeing your, your story on the screen and watching Anne and Thomas and, you know, what was that experience like for you? I mean, it's kind of like the difference between watching a cartoon and a documentary. <laughs> so when something just <laughs> exists in your imagination, it, it, it doesn't look quite real. And then seeing it on screen and not not only only real but beautiful um, and so well drawn and so well paced the cinematography and the set design the costumes everything the music it all mm. came together to form like a really complete um, new work of art in, in which I can identify the characters but they're definitely their own well thank you guys so much for your time and uh, congrats on the film thank, thank you, you. Thank you.